case it isn't obvious enough, for this tutorial we are going to be painting this delicious iced donut. Um, I've printed out a photograph like this and I've just put some pencil on the back and traced it down this really super easy way. Just a simple outline using my 0.5 pencil. The paints that I'm using today are from May Marie Blue. I think that's how you say it. And I'm just using um, a few colours from this set, but please use the nearest colours that you have. Um, I'll just talk about materials really quickly. The colours that I've chosen here are Nickel Titanium, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Perial Red, Sepia Neutral Tint and Burnt Umber. And the brushes are from a selection um, from Zen Art Suppliers and my spotter from Rosemary & Co. And I've chosen to use mixed media paper for this tutorial simply because I like it and it makes the blending process really, really easy. So watercolour is all about working from light to dark and layering up your paint in slow, careful layers, making sure that each layer is dry before you apply the next in order to get the depth of colour that you need. So first of all, you can see me applying a light wash of nickel to titanium. And this is just a really pale yellow colour. If you don't have this colour or this set, then please use like a pale, you could use something like a, a cadmium lemon, something like that, but make sure that you put plenty of water. You can see me applying this to the central part in the middle section of the donut. This is where our lightest area is, and that's why I am applying this here, wet on dry, using my number two size round brush, or a number, sorry, my number one size round, or you could use um, a spotter brush as I've recommended in the past, because I really love these brushes. Next up, we have a mixture of cadmium yellow medium along with a tiny bit of perial red and you could use any yellow or any orange and you can see me adding a tiny bit of sepia to this just to take the brightness out of it and I'm applying this onto the dry paint that I've already applied, this being my second layer. I've chosen these brushes because they have a really small bristle, very similar to the spotter brushes, and if you've got spotters, they work just as well. But something you want to use something with a um, sort of fairly um, controllable point, if you like, something that's really easy to, to manage. So now that this paint is dry, you can see me adding the second layer of paint um, to the donut like this. Now we have a free line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this tutorial, indeed all of our tutorials here on YouTube, and you can access these for free by going over to our Facebook group and I will link that in the description underneath this video. But you'll notice I have a photograph of the donut on the screen here on the top right hand side. I recently conducted a poll on YouTube and most of you said that you prefer to have the photograph in situ as I work through. So for this tutorial, this is a bit of a trial, this is what I'm doing and I will leave it on screen throughout the tutorial for you. So let me know whether you prefer to have it here or whether you find it a little bit distracting. So as I said, now that that first layer is dry, you can see me just using a small motion here to apply the paint over that first wash. Now, if you are new to watercolour painting, I highly recommend that you watch this video right the way through so that you can see that tricky process unfold to create a painting that you can be proud of right at the end. So the paints that I'm using today are from my new set. I treated myself to a set of paints and I've, one of my um, YouTube viewers recommended these paints to me. They are made by May Mary Blue. I think that's how you say it. I'm not really sure how you pronounce it. So if you know, perhaps you could just drop it in the comments, write it out phonetically so that I can say it properly. But they are single pigment paints and they are of a very high quality. In fact, as I was using them for the first time in this tutorial, I found that you've got a massive amount of paint um, for just a tiny bit of application so they are really really good quality but if you do want to join in with this tutorial use what you have. Um, in the past I've recommended um, paints such as Mungia which I use for most of my tutorials but um, anything that you have will work well. Um, just apply your layers slowly and carefully as you can see me doing here. I do have a particular method of application and I have made a video about this um, if you'd like to have a look in more detail and I'll link that on the top of your screen right now so that you can click through and watch it after this video but I do explain it here um, in easy to follow steps so hopefully this will be sufficient for you to follow through with me. 
Once I've applied the paint, you can see me just blending it through with a tiny bit of water, patting my brush dry before I apply it back onto the paper. You'll notice that I've got a tiny puddle of paint on my palette here. The first puddle that you can see is actually just water, and I tend to use the sort of small puddle here rather than dip my brush into the jar because that can flood your brush with water and make the application process a little, little harder. You get too much water on your paper and make it difficult to control. By just adding this tiny little bit of water on the palette here, it makes it easier. I've just missed a bit in the middle here, so I'm just applying the, the same colour here. Now that everything's dry, I've cleaned up my palette and I'm going to mix a tiny puddle of Perial Red and Sepia. We want this to be just a hint of colour. I mean, it's hardly there. And we're going to take this over the top of the icing of the donut. You can see me adding a lot more water here. Wet on dry, which means we'll be applying the paint directly onto the paper. So because we're working in layers, we can start by putting the lightest layers in first, as you can see here. And this is just to add a tiny bit of shadow. You can see from the photograph that the icing, although it's white, we can see there are definite areas of shadow there and it does have its own colour. So once again, once everything's dry, I'm going to focus on the chocolate drizzles on the top of the cake here. And I'm mixing the same two colours, the uh, Perial Red with a tiny bit of sepia and also a tiny bit of um, burnt umber. And we want this to be the same colour as before, but this time a slightly thicker consistency. You'll notice on the donut that I did a, a sort of syrupy drizzle, which has left some residue on, on it, on the donut. And you can see the little globules of syrup on there, which I wanted to keep in some of them, but not all of them. So we're going to be painting a few of them in just for simplicity. I've left a lot of them out, just that you know. So I'm just applying a really simple layer of this paint over the pencil lines, as you can see here, and just following that pencil line through and just continuing the process over the entire donut. Wet on dry with a really simple pale layer of paint. And I've covered the entire donut in the same wash and made sure that it's dry. And now that it is, we want to start thinking about the other elements of our initial first wash. So for this, I'm going to mix um, a tiny bit of neutral tint along with a tiny bit of sepia. I'm applying water to this area around the donut, taking great care not to go on the donut itself and around the little droplets of um, syrup that you can see here. This is wet in wet. This means that we'll be dropping in the paint like this to give it a lovely soft blur. We can let the paint gently soak into the water that we've applied and it just makes it look really soft and really natural. Letting the paint do the hard work. Because we wanted to have a softer edge, this is why we're working wet and wet at the moment. Working around the syrup that's drizzled onto the, onto the table. So as I said, we have the reference photograph that you can print out and trace down yourself, as well as a simple outline, as, as well as a simple line drawing. And you can access these by joining our Facebook group. I'll link it in the description box underneath this video, as I said already, but please consider joining us there because we are a lovely community. And you can also post your finished paintings from these tutorials and get some feedback, both from me and our other lovely members. So do consider joining us. You can see me here just pushing out the paint with a dry brush, just to give a little bit of texture here and there. Because I've used mixed media paper, it does make really light work of blending, and um, it, I just really, really love using it because it makes um, applications super, super easy. You can see me here just dropping in the pigment once more. Um, this is still wet and wet, 
And just to recap, I'm sorry that the, um, the pigment is out of shot here on my palette, but it's neutral tint with a tiny bit of sepia, um, mostly neutral tint to give it a kind of gray tone as you can see. And I'm just working around the outside of the donut where it hits that syrup drizzle. So I'm mixing a watery puddle of, this is burnt umber, and I'm going to add to this a tiny bit of a yellow tone in a moment because I think it's just, got, if you look at the photograph you can see it's got the tiniest sort of yellowy hue to it. And this is just the first wash that we're putting on here and it's just going to form the base of our drizzle of our syrup. And just blending it through with this brush here. These brushes are from Zen Art and they are um, from their fine line selection. They are beautiful brushes. Um, they are of synthetic and this is the smallest of the bunch that I can find. This is number 5.0 and now that the donut has dried I'm just going over some of the areas to enhance some of that yellow tone. So I have a mixture on my palette of cadmium yellow medium with a tiny bit of imperial red, just to enhance the paint that's already in place. I ought to say at this point, when I applied the wash to the syrup drizzles on the table, you can see that I've left a tiny little highlight that's just about visible um, on camera there. And we're going to be building these up a little bit later. But for now, this is our template wash. And you can see that we've got that sort of base color in place on all the elements of the donut so that we can really start to build up the colors later on once the paint is dry. Just paying close attention to my reference photograph. So once I've applied the paint, as usual, I'm just blending it through with a damp brush. But by having this tiny puddle of water on my palette, it really does help the application process without flooding that brush with too much water. So focusing now on the middle of the donut, you can see me adding a mixture of burnt umber with a tiny bit of imperial red here and um, just to get that dark colour in the centre there. And this is a tiny bit of that Perial Red mix again. We don't want it to look too orangey, but just a tiny hint of orange that have that little glow coming from the middle. And just adding a tiny bit more cadmium yellow medium to put on the outside. And once again, blending it through. And I'm just sharpening up the outside edge where the chocolate drizzles meet the middle of the donut by using the tip of my number 5.0 fine liner brush. And like I said, this one's from Zen Art, but if you have got spotter brushes that I've recommended before, then these will work just as well. You want anything that has a fine point and that's really easy to handle, really whatever works for you. But these are really lovely brushes. And as I said at the start of this video, all the materials that I'm using for this tutorial, I will link in the description box underneath this video so that you can check them out for yourself. Just blending everything through with a soft brush, with a, with a soft touch with my brush like this. And you can see how I'm just dipping in and out of the puddles that I have on my palette here. Just strengthening up those colors as I feel they are necessary by looking at my photograph.
So you can see me mixing on my palette here a tiny bit of sepia with burnt umber and now that the chocolate drizzle has dried for the first wash we can start to enhance the chocolate. If you look carefully at the photo you'll see that the chocolate isn't a solid colour and it has very sort of different switches in tonal, con in tonal value. So when we're talking about painting, tonal value, in other words the value of that colour is just as important as the colour. So if you look carefully you'll see that there's a darker element of that chocolate, of that chocolatey colour towards the outside edges I'm applying it here and the same throughout the rest of the donut as you'll see me applying the paint as I work through. So for this I as I've said, I'm using a mixture of burnt umber and sepia to create that sort of dark chocolatey tone with a smidgen of imperial red. So any red colour that you have, just to take some of that browniness out of it. But notice how I'm staying out of some of the elements of that chocolate drizzle to make it look more realistic. And I'm applying it where I can see the darker areas of the chocolate within the photograph, keeping out of those lighter washes that we applied to begin with. So remember, watercolour is all about working from light to dark and once you've got your light areas, your light washes in place, your first application, you can go in later with your darker values. And if you are finding value for this video, you may want to consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. We have brand new tutorials every single Tuesday and we are on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour so do consider following us there too. So you can see the paint on my palette is a lot more dry than my initial washes. We want to have a lot more control over our paint at this point. So make sure that you have a slightly thicker consistency when you're doing your subsequent washes. And once again, even though they're smaller areas, you can see me blending them in with this tiny little brush here, working around those little um, drizzly bits of chocolate just carefully working through them bit by bit and you can really take your time with this kind of painting. You don't want it to be a solid colour, it just wouldn't look natural. Just dip in between the two puddles on my palette. I'm also using this opportunity to tidy up any untidy edges with this really small brush. I'll continue the process for all the other bits of chocolate drizzle. You'll notice that there's a tiny droplet of syrup here and I'm just applying a tiny bit of that wash around the outside so that it stands out a little bit more, just adding a lot of water to it and just blending it through. You don't have to add your droplets of syrup, I just thought it would add a little bit more interest to the painting. Okay, so everything's dry and I've got a mixture here of neutral tint with sepia, this time in a really watery consistency again and I'm applying this where I believe there are more shadows on the donut's icing to give it a little bit more shape and a little bit more dimension. But you want this paint to be really, really watery, you want it to look natural and just by adding a lot of water to your pigment you'll create just about enough colour to make it look really, really natural, like that ice and sugar has some shape and some form. So, but just be really careful, you want it to be quite light, you don't want it to look too dark. I'm also adding a tiny bit of that sepia and red mix to the neutral tint, just for a little bit of variation in tone. You'll also notice how I've added a tiny bit of this to the little droplet of syrup on the upper left hand side of the donut. So everything's dry, so I'm just returning my I'm just returning my attention to the bottom of the donut where it hits the table and the syrup, and using that mix of sepia 
and a neutral tint just working around the base like that blending it through I've decided to keep the tiniest droplet of syrup there as you can see or there's a little gap and I'm just blending this into the syrup that is resting on the tabletop there I'm adding a tiny bit of the yellow tone to it because as I said earlier on I did feel looking at the photograph that it had this kind of hint of yellow and that's why I put in this here working around that tiny little highlight towards the front of the syrup that's resting on the table you want to work around that and there's also a tiny bit of the uh, light showing at the very bottom part of it as well By using this small brush, you can really control your paint application and just go wherever you want to go. Generally speaking, when you're working in smaller areas, I would want the paint to be a lot thicker, but because this is such a subtle color, we, are ha we do have a lot of water in this section here. And the same on the other side, once again, keeping out of that tiny little highlight towards the front. You can see already that these um, little droplets of syrup look like they're shiny. It's all about creating illusion with watercolour when you're painting like this and it can be really impressive to look at when you can see all this gloss and shine from something that you're painting. Very easy to do but very easy to impress people with, I think. and working around these little droplets of syrup and strengthening up the outside of the donut with a neutral tint mixed with a tiny bit of sepia. And just creating some texture on the table by wiggling my brush like this. Just being careful as I hit the outside edge of the donut and the outside edge of the syrup here, just to be careful, make sure that it is dry and um, just be careful not to get your paint running into that if it's wet. So just make sure that it's dry and working around the outside edge of it like this, just to give it a little bit more dimension. So I'm doing the same thing on the syrup drizzles here to create a little bit of texture because it is um, transparent. You can see the table underneath. So I just want to give the illusion of that being visible like this. And working around those little highlights. And just strengthening up the areas here and there. We've still got quite a bit to do. Just to let you know that we do have a Patreon where we do full length botanical painting tutorials every month. We have different membership levels as you can see here. They are exclusive to Patreon so they won't be on YouTube and they will of course be ad free so that you can just watch them and paint along. We also have weekly vlog type videos as well. So if this is something that interests you I will link it in the description box underneath this video. So do consider joining us there and it is a way for you to support my channel if you want to. So here we go with the next layers of paint. Everything's dry, I've cleaned up my palette and we can start now to really pack a punch with the colors. So going back to our original mix of Perial Red uh, with a little bit of sepia and a little bit of burnt umber and a separate puddle here of burnt umber with neutral tint and another really watery mix of yellow as you can see we can really start to put some drama into this. Now I've added a tiny bit of Perial Red to that as well. Just taking an overall look at the entire thing. And now we can start to really build up the colors to their conclusion. So just building them up slowly and carefully. Using the tip of my brush to sharpen any areas as you can see here.
you are enjoying this video, then please give it a thumbs up. It's a free way of letting YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. So once again, you can see me just building up these layers, working around that little droplet there, enhancing around the outside, which makes it pop off the donut and make it look three dimensional. And see me flitting between the two brown tones that I have mixed here, working with the tiniest amount of pressure around that droplet just to make it stand out a little bit more. But be careful, less is more when you come to doing this kind of painting. And I'm just enhancing some of the areas where I felt that the ice and sugar was a tiny bit too white, just to give it a little bit more form. And you can also take this chance, to, this opportunity to sharpen up any edges where the paint has dried and it can go a little bit untidy. So you can sharpen up those edges as you work through. Um, I'm using mostly this number 5.0 brush, the Zen Art brush. This is from the Fine Line color selection. I think they come in a packet of, um, I think they come in a set of 12 paints and they are really, really reasonably priced and they are excellent value for money. Really love using them, so do take a look. I'm working around these as you can see here, but like I keep saying, please use whichever brushes that you have that you feel comfortable with. It's all about what works for you. So just working through and adding a tiny bit of shadow here. And of course, blending it through as usual, keeping that little puddle on my paint, on my palette. I'm just enhancing the yellow tone on the drizzles of syrup there, working around those little highlights as before. and working around these tiny little droplets of syrup on the outside here, just by working around the outside of them like this to create the illusion of them popping off the table.
I'm just adding a tiny bit of that wash, this is the um, sepia mix here, to the droplet on the top there just to enhance the outside edge a tiny bit. You can see the the, the most um, tiniest amount of paint on my brush there but it really is very strong pigment. These paints that I'm using um, are really really beautiful. So just make sure that everything's dry before we can start to add a little bit more detail here using the tip of my number 5.0 brush and just zooming in a little bit for you. And just adding a little bit more detail here and there. So I want to just work slightly on the, I want to work on the outside edge of where the syrup droplets are on the table. You'll notice from the photo that they do seem to have a, a harder outside edge. So that's what I'm doing here, using the tip of my brush just to sharpen it up where it hits the table to give the illusion of it sort of popping off that uh, tabletop. And then as usual, just blending it through. But make sure if you do this, make sure that you have a really fine point to your brush. You want it to look really, really natural. You don't want it to have a thick outside edge at all. And make sure that you blend it through also. So now that this is dry, you can see me once more just adding a little bit of detail. This is the same mix that I've used earlier, so we have burnt umber and uh, sepia. And now I'm enhancing the tiny bits of chocolate drizzle that have fallen to the side of the donut. stage we still have a little way to go but it really is a matter of just repeating the process as you can see here so I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this video in peace listening to some music. I'll put a playlist at the end of this video um, with some more tutorials that you may want to watch so click through and I'll see you there so thank you so much for watching watch until the end so that you can see the finished painting and I'll see you soon.